Talented people, listened to so many good talks. Um, got Robert, the car hacking extraordinaire over here that's uh, just hanging out, that's kind of cool. Um, Michael Osman is here, like the dude that created HackRF. Um, I hung out with a hacker last night, most of you probably don't know, and I'm like a fanboy of this guy, and he just kind of showed up, and I'm like, holy shit. So, um, having a really good time, so uh, we're gonna do a toast. You probably, I'm probably the only guy here with alcohol in the morning. Um, so shout out tequila, but thanks for having me. And uh, cheers. Red team. Red team. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, my talk's gonna be a little suspenseful. Uh, so Halloween back in 2018, two Black Hill security uh, researchers, Bo Bullock and Michael Felch, disclosed to Google step-by-step step how anybody with a Gmail account could inject a uh, event into anyone else's Google Calendar um, as accepted via the Google API. Google calls us a feature. As a red teamer, I totally agree with that. <laughs> um, so a year later, still is not fixed, and this is why I entitled my talk. Uh, <coughs> What the fuck, Google? How is this still not fixed? Um, but really, no, my talk is actually gone collishing. A um, little bit about who I am. Uh, again, I'm Antonio Piazza. I go by Tony. Um, Ant-Man, been my handle for a long time. I'm an offensive security engineer at Box uh, out of Austin, Texas. Um, started my career in doing this uh, social engineering thing way back when I got my psychology degree from Ohio State. Um, then went to the Army and was a 35 Mike human intelligence collector um, slash interrogator in Iraq slash professional liar slash lie detector. Um, so later I decided to kind of get a computer science degree and translated this all over and, uh, you know, have fun doing social engineering. Um, so uh, a little bit of an update uh, back at DerbyCon time. Um, Forbes wrote up this really nice article for Google and said, hey, uh, they're working on this, they're aware of this, based solely on this one forum post from a Google employee that said they're working on this. Um, no interviewing anyone, and um, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. I don't know how much weight this would hold, but cool, Google's working on it. Um, just gonna kind of skip through the agenda. This is, uh, I, used to, I did this talk a few times, it's much lo uh, longer. Um, my demo is going to be much shorter here. Uh, so what is collishing? Uh, well, I made up the word, and I put it on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> so it's, it's legit now. Um, I have much more upvotes and a bunch of trolls downvoting me, too, than uh, from when I took this uh, screenshot. But yeah, it's just basically phishing using um, a calendar, and in this case, Google Calendar. Uh, yeah, so used in a sentence. Um, this Google Calendar event is likely a collishing scam, and I'm going to collish these fools and get a shell on their Mac. All right, why is this talk relevant to red and blue teamers? Um, well, let's start with red. It's super effective and super easy to do. So um, if you're working in an in-house red team and you have a, 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 for a corporation that has sales, uh, client-facing sales, or um, um, support. Um, they they make a lot of they put a lot of stuff on their Google calendars, right? Especially they're using obviously they're using G Suite. Um, they don't really pay attention to you know that. Like they'll put something on their calendar, they'll forget about it, and then all of a sudden they'll get uh, a, a pop up, you know, saying, "Hey, you got an event in five minutes where you need to talk to this person," you know, a sales meeting, whatnot. Um, so yeah, they uh, they go, "Oh, cool! Here's the Zoom link. Let me click on it." Uh, download a malicious payload, and we, we got a shell. Um, super convincing. Um, I, I've, I've had a lot of success with this attack. Um, so on the other hand, why is this, you know, how does this help Blue? Well, um, I heard Dave Kennedy give a talk once uh, talking about, you know, you can, you can use all the tactics you want and have a, have a wide array of tactics to throw at your Blue team, but um, you really got to get down to the technique, right? This is a newer technique. This is a newer uh, uh, attack uh, uh, vector. So... You know, this, it's, it's something that your blue team might not have seen yet, and you can uh, expose them to it before you actually see it uh, coming up at them in the wild. 
Um, helps, you can also educate your users on uh, what to look for, you know, uh, when there could be a malicious uh, injection into the calendar, and that's kind of the best way where you can defend against it, in my opinion. Um, relevance continued, so I did some digging, and I think of the, what, 37 Fortune 1000 companies in Silicon Valley, about 17% of them use G Suite. Um, and then I continued to dig in just random big companies, and I found out of the 27 that I looked at, 10 of them use G Suite, so it's about 37%. So there's a lot of G Suite customers out there um, that, are, that are vulnerable to this attack. Um, and I didn't give you all these names, by the way. You did this all on your own. Um, yeah, so I normally would go through each step of this uh, attack, but I'm going to kind of, this is again, this is a condensed version. Uh, I'll have the links to where I uh, actually have the step-by-step -step of things. Uh, the first thing, if you're, if you're working um, not so much an in-house red team, but maybe a, a contractor, um, you know, you need to find out if, if the uh, company you're, you're looking at uses G Suite Dig is a great tool. Um, sometimes it's super obvious. Obviously, if I dig on an MX record on Google.com, and I see that Google is their, their email. Uh, kind of stupid. But um, sometimes it's not as obvious. You can get something like, um, you know, PP hosted. Uh, so you've got proof point protection, cloud protection. Um, you can give it a shot if it's up in the cloud, right? You've got a chance if you want to try this. Um, but I think an even better dig would be uh, to, so I did... Uh, uh, on the TXT record for Twitter, you can see the, the SPF record down here, which is a type of DNS record. Anybody familiar with SPF? Good, good. Um, so what, hap what can happen if you don't use SPF on your email? Anybody know? What's that? Okay, so anyway, I'll give you the answer. Uh, you can spoof the email, so I can send, a, send an email as... You know, if Twitter didn't have SPF protection, I could send an email to somebody as, you know, antman at twitter.com. So, um, but for us, just doing recon, um, we can see that their SPF is actually google.com, so Twitter uses G Suite for their, their email. Um, finally, uh, my partner at Box, uh, Cedric Owens, been doing a lot of talks at DerbyCon, uh, DEF CON Red Team Village this year, first time they had that there which is surprising, but uh, cool. Um, he created a tool called Gobbler, which is really good open source. You can get it on uh, GitHub, um, and it, you put in a domain name, it does a ton of recon stuff for you, um, including uh, the SPF text records. Um, you can find here, so again, twitter.com. Um, so the way that you get this attack to work is you have to actually get a uh, Google or G Suite API key for Google Calendar. It's super easy to do. And again, here's my Medium post that will take you step by step. Normally, I would show this, but it's too time consuming. Um, so it takes me to the tool that I wrote called G Collisher, open source Python tool. Um, all this really is is I copied. Uh, so there's a, a PowerShell module called Mail Sniper by the two. Black Hill security guys I mentioned that found this. Um, they have a, uh, a module called Invoke Inject G Event API. I, that's all in PowerShell, obviously. I took that, ported it over to Python because not everybody uses Windows. I work in an all Mac shop, so um, this works out much better for me. All right, so the demonstration of how this works. Let me get out of this slideshow. I guess I'm doing pretty good on time. Maybe I could have gone through all that. Um, hopefully the internet's working. Hopefully, can everybody see that? Do I need to zoom in? Make it big? Okay, so um, this is kind of the help menu. There's uh, some mandatory arguments that you're gonna need. Um, the tack E is the attacker email. So that's, um, again, if we'd go through the steps that I, that I, show, that I was gonna show. Um, the attacker email, you kinda want it to be something that's gonna um, help you fool your victim. So in the case uh, for this demo, I created a guy named John Lear, 
So I created a Gmail address, johnlear.ccf, you know, at gmail.com. Put the CCF in there. CCF was the fictitious company that this John Lear works for. So uh, make, it, make it believable. I mean, I know it has at gmail.com at the end of it, but you can, you can fool a lot of people if you just throw in a dot, whatever, you know, on there. Um, the the attack X for targets, you can put as many targets as you want. Um, these are the, the victim Gmail addresses, and it's comma separated, no spaces. Uh, the access token, that's the biggest part that I, I, again, you can go to my Medium post, go through step-by-step step and get that. Um, that's going to give you the API access that you need. The TAC S, which is the start date, you need that, and it has to be in this format. Um, the year, 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 month, month, uh, day, day, T, hour, hour, colon, minute, minute. If you don't do it like that, you get in there. And um, just want to let you know, like, this tool sucks. I didn't do any kind of error checking or, or, um, or argument checking or anything like that, but anybody's welcome to go on GitHub and do that for me. If not, I don't give a fuck. It still works. So uh, for me. Um, and then you have to have the TACF for the, the finish date time, which is, again, the same format. Um, and if you have something wrong, again, no error checking. Um, you might get like a 401 or a 404 or not know why. You know it works when you get a 200 back. So that's all I got for you. Um, the... Uh, the other optional arguments, the important one, TAC T is the event title. You probably don't want to send a calendar event to somebody without a title. That could look pretty suspicious. Um, the, uh, let's see what else is uh, good on here. Uh, TAC D, the description. That's where you're probably going to, um, you can, you can uh, embed uh, URLs uh, using HTML and that. And that's where your little description of the event's going to be, so get creative. Um, I, would, I wouldn't recommend skipping that either. But you don't have to put those if you don't want. Um, time zone, first time using the time zone was actually in Canada last weekend when I was at Hackfest, and then I used it again here, and it works. Uh, normally it defaults to uh, central time, so if you don't want to be central time, change that one. Um, so, sorry. Let me get out of here. Um, before I run this, anybody want to val Anybody got uh, Google Calendar on their phone that wants to give me their Gmail address? <laughs> oh, come on, man. I know I told you I was a professional liar, but I swear I won't hack you. Um, so anyway, I got it set up for mine, so fuck you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you can see, I already got the, uh, the API key here. I told you that was an important part. Well, all these are important. Um, you can see down here I embedded a, a link. I created a Zoom link. This is actually based on a real um, you know, calendar invite that I had with a Zoom uh, link on it. And then I embedded the malicious link here. Um, before I do that, just want to show you guys this one thing. Hopefully you can see this. I have this unchecked, so just keep that in mind. Automatically add events from Gmail to my calendar. Um, I think that's unchecked by default because a lot of people like when they get, you know, get the email from their, uh, for their flights or whatever, it automatically adds that to their calendar. Um, this is one of the fixes that Google said works, but it doesn't. It doesn't stop the API injection, so I just want to show you before I, I run this that that's bullshit. Um, and hopefully the internet works. I was having some problems. All right, we got 200, right? So it worked. Yay. And there I am. Um, got your shells. Got my Zoom link here. Um, so just, sorry, for uh, uh, educational purposes for, for your people uh, in your corporation uh, that you want to, again, this is kind of the same old trick in emails. Roll over the hyperlink. You're going to see down here that it's really not going to where it says it is here. So something to educate people on. Of course, you got all this Google garbage at the beginning, so you got to train people to look past that. Know how easy that's going to be. But, um, you know, it's there. So educate your folks on that. Um, so when I click on the, the Zoom link, come on, Internet. 
probably get some ads from YouTube because they love to do that. Maybe. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right, sell me some shit. And there we go. I, I love the Rick Roll still. I'm an idiot, but it's funny to me every time I get somebody fall for a Rick Roll. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the tool. Um, let me go back to the slideshow. Oh, thanks. Um, so yeah, I got plenty of time. Um, so moving on, uh, command and control. This is uh, kind of my bread and butter when I do these um, social engineering phishing things. I, like, I, have, I build the infrastructure up in GCP, um, but we, we created for, for an exercise that we did recently, we created a fake Zoom update. That's why I used the Zoom link. Um, so instead of getting Rickrolled, they would go and it would download a DMG, again, a Mac environment. Um, and that DMG would actually uh, had a Zoom update app that wrapped around an AppFell payload. Anybody here familiar with AppFell? Wow, nobody. Okay, you guys don't like Macs, do you? Um, yeah, either do I, but I, I want to attack them. Um, so Spectre Ops, Cody Thomas, it's a feature, created this um, C2 framework called AppFell, and it works great for Macs. It's got a JXA payload. Um, works perfect, gets around a lot of defenses, um, just awesome, and he's constantly updating it. So if you, if you get into Macs, or even they have some good Linux uh, payloads as well, check it out. Um, I've been running with it for a while, and again, he's, he's constantly updating it, and it's great. Uh, my partner, Cedric Owens, by the way, he has a Medium post where he talks about building that, uh, that Zoom app wrapper, um, yeah, around the, payload, around the JXA payload. Um, so yeah, uh, Okay, anybody familiar with like Mac hacking at all? All right, cool. All right, we got one at least. So maybe uh, Gatekeeper, you know what Gatekeeper is? So basically it just, uh, it's, a, it's a security measure uh, put in by Apple where um, it checks to make sure that an app that you download from a browser is signed, right? It has to be signed and notarized by Apple. Now, since, well, I think it's before Catalina, uh, during Mojave, they. They, and now if you have Catalina, you can't run any Apple apps without it being um, uh, notarized. So, so you, yeah, okay, so think about my, my Zoom app. Um, how the hell am I gonna get that around Gatekeeper, right? Well, um, so you just register for a Apple developer account, 100 bucks, right? Um, the cool way you can do this is use this net spend. You can go get one of these prepaid cards. And the cool thing with NetSpend is you can actually um, give it an address, a name that links to, create a completely fictitious person, um, fictitious email address. Um, you got yourself a card, they'll actually, you gotta give them your address so they're gonna mail you the card with your name and everything on it, but you can use this prepaid one before they do that. Works really well for red teaming. So we go ahead and we spend 100 bucks, we get an Apple developer account, um, and we get stuff notarized. Uh, Um, getting stuff notarized is actually really easy. Um, it takes about three minutes total. Apple notarizes your app, right? We found out the hard way, though, <laughs> that if you have anything malicious in it, in about a week, they're going to just cut your, your uh, certs, and you no longer can use that. But, so you burn $100. Um, but yeah, you got a week to use it, so... If you're cool spending 100 bucks for a week, you know, you, you can have a good time. Um, so, and this is also what happens if uh, you link your net spend account to your real name and you actually have a developer account under your real name, your um, certs are actually gonna have your real name in it. So when your blue team finds the, the uh, payload, they'll see that you're part of the red team. So I learned that one the hard way as well. Uh, <laughs> Don't use your real name. <laughs> uh, this is just a, uh, an example of that Zoom update uh, wrapper that I was telling you about. That's the Fugats, and that's the real. Pretty similar, we just got rid of the what's new thing and made sure that all they could do is update. But at that time, when they open that DMG and run it, they don't even have to click that. We already got the C2, or we, we already got the, the callback to our C2. 
Um, the, the way we got burned with the, we found out that uh, when we made the uh, de first developer account, we got burned and lost 100 bucks, is we had this and we had it calling out to the C2, but we also had it stealing, obviously stealing credentials. Like there's a pop-up asking for credentials. When we took that out, I'm still going strong for about a month and Apple has not killed my, my malware yet. So um, just don't make it obvious too and you can, you can go, that 100 bucks is to take you far. Um, so how do we stop this, right? Google says this is a feature, okay. Um, I thought I had a partial fix once. I was in the shower, I like jumped out butt naked, ran to my computer because I came up with this epiphany, you know. Um, that it basically, what I was like, okay, if I, if I can have burp suite run in and I can do the API injection versus a normal addition, event addition to a Google Calendar, there'd be some sort of difference. Um, so yeah, I, I thought, okay, well, the person that you're injecting into might still have, have that uh, invite come to their phone, but who cares, right? My job is to protect the enterprise. I don't give a shit about your phone. Um, so yeah, it's partial fix, right? Um, yeah, I was wrong. Um, that didn't work. So um, there really is no difference that I could see. I'm also not like you know super skilled on picking out the fine details of um, um, HTTP uh, posts. So if anybody else is, that might be something that you could help me look into. Um, cool thing is some of the guys on the blue team at Box, um, I started meeting with them, come up with ideas after I pwned the shit out of everybody. Um, guy Brandon, um, he's on the red team with me, he thought about, well, maybe there's like a, a time discrepancy, right? So like, because you're making an API call and it instantly adds the, uh, adds the event to somebody's calendar, that's unnatural, right? A human's not going to instantly you know, accept the, the invite. So maybe there's a difference in time. Um, something we're still looking into, haven't found that, and I'll tell you why. Um, and then uh, another, uh, one of our analysts, uh, Ben Phillips, also came up with the idea that um, is pretty cool. Uh, looking at the uh, user agent string, you can identify that like my app is a Python app, right? Um, so it's, it can stop script kitties um, that maybe just grab your tool. Um, of course, right after he found that, I went and added into my tool where you could change the user agent string, so fuck him. But that's kind of like the, uh, you know, the back and forth between red and blue. Um, obviously, he came up with a fix. I had to come up with a you know, work around the fix. Fun times, right? Um, so yeah, we were all like, okay, cool. We can stop script kitties with this. Um, and then we took a look at um, Google's like uh, lag time between getting us the logs. And I don't know if you can read this, but it says one to three days. So yeah, that doesn't work out for us. Um, we can't really catch stuff in real time. Um, turns out it's not actually that long, but it's, uh, I think it was like, I don't know how much it was, like maybe close to an hour or something when we were getting the logs. Still not. It's still on SAT. I mean, we need to see this stuff in real time. So um, the thing is, is like, all right, well, maybe Google is the only one that can fix this for us. Maybe not. Maybe there's a lot of smart blue teamers from yesterday's talk. So when we go out there, if you have any ideas, man, I'm, I'm open to listen to them because my job as red teamer is to, to help, uh, help our blue teamers learn and, uh, you know, flex their muscles uh, to different attacks and, and uh, you know, set up our defenses so the work. Um, so yeah, back to this checkbox thing. Um, this is, I, I, I don't know if you guys saw, but like there's Twitter kind of exploded maybe a month or, or more ago with all the spam coming in on Google calendars. It was just after I finished writing this, this talk and all of a sudden everybody in the cybersecurity community wanted to have a medium post that, oh, you can fix that, you can fix that. And this was their fix. And I just showed you, obviously that's bullshit. Like that's not a fix. But, and if they would have re read the uh, Black Hills security paper, um, yeah, they would have known that uh, actually those guys wrote that this only fixed the, uh, the there, there was two versions. There was an email injection, there was an API injection. It stopped the email injection, but as we just saw, it doesn't stop the API injection. Um, yeah, so that's it.
Uh, normally I take questions, but I think we're about out of time, so uh, I'll take them out there. And if anybody wants, here's like all the references and um, uh, GitHub, take pictures, whatever. Um, yeah, man, I just got it right on the end. So um, finally, the most important point, most important takeaway from this talk, I gotta, I gotta tell you, is um, Epstein did not kill himself. Uh, <laughs> thanks. All right. Thanks, Amen. Yeah. That was awesome. Thanks. So, I, I, uh, if anyone has any questions for him, uh, we can move it out to the patio, get some drinks, and, and talk to each other. Uh, I do have one other announcement for anyone that's doing skydiving. Uh, tomorrow for fun day. Uh, we all have to meet at the registration desk at 1 p.m. So if, if you're doing skydiving, just keep that in mind. 1 p.m., go to the registration desk. All right? But yeah, give it up again for Ant-Man, and we'll, uh, we'll see you outside. <laughs>